Hey guys, Caesar here. If you're part of a family, you've faced it, picky eaters. And it may be that the picky eater in your family stares back at you from the mirror each day. Now I know some of you are thinking, hey Caesar, this isn't your normal topic. Stick with me, okay? So my children weren't all crazy picky about their food, okay? But they sure like to complain about it. Now, I did a lot of traveling internationally when my kids were younger. It was not uncommon for God to take me into kind of crazy situations like a war zone or natural disaster for weeks at a time. And the things I saw and smelled and tasted and at times ate left profound impressions on me, okay, in regards to having uh, what I call an entitlement mentality. But fortunately, seeing people with so little means of support or none made me a more grateful person at least for a while. And I wanted my family to truly understand this and embrace God's abundant grace that had been poured into our life as well. And see, here's the thing. When you experience radical differences in lifestyles and the expectations of other people who are at a similar age and stage of life as you, it can really throw you for a loop. And it caused me to do some crazy recalibrating. I started noticing how much complaining we all did back home about everything. But one regular source of grumbling was around the dinner table. Okay? My kids were around 13, 11, and 9 years old at the time. And even though my wife, Tina, is a seriously awesome cook, they often didn't want to eat what she made and set on the table. That's it. This has to stop. Don't you kids know how lucky you are to have food like this? Do you know that two-thirds of the people living on this planet would be stoked if they just had beans and rice to eat today? Just once a day. Not three meals. Now, I'm probably shouting a little at the kids at this point, right? Making my point, <laughs> pounding something. I have been with so many kids who have had nothing to eat for days or even weeks, and they would be thrilled to just have a little beans and rice. Okay? Yikes. Stop the complaining. So I concocted a plan that my wife went along with. Okay? She wasn't as stoked, but she went along with it. For the next 30 days, we would eat nothing but beans and rice for dinner. That's it. Okay, the kids could still, you know, have their normal Cheerios and toast or whatever for breakfast, and they could eat their school lunches. I'm not a total tyrant, but at dinner, it would be nothing but beans and rice for a month. Then, maybe they, I, I mean we, would learn to be a little more thankful, less grumbly for what we have to eat around here. Awesome, right? Well, the kids didn't think so, but they had no choice, and you know, they had to go along for the ride. And so it went, beans and rice every day until about 12 days into our little experiment on attitude adjustment. I came back from work one day and Tina was just getting ready to set out dinner and I noticed that it was not beans and rice. What? Why are we not having beans and rice for dinner tonight? We're not even halfway through the month. Well, Tina explained, well, today's Kristen's birthday and as was our regular family tradition, she got to pick what we ate for dinner. It was her birthday, Kristen's birthday, her choice. I'm like, yeah, yeah, but not this time. We're doing the beans and rice thing. No way. But it was too late. The food was cooked, and the promise had already been made to Kristen. We, and so we, we shared this meal of broccoli and chicken divan, followed by birthday cake with 11 blazing candles and chocolate ice cream. I have to admit, even though Tina had been pretty creative in her making a variety of you know, different versions of beans and rice so far, this was a pretty welcome break in the action. But not being one to go back on my ruthless quest to be more thankful, I reinstituted the experiment for starting over for another full 30 days. So in the end, we ended up eating nothing but beans and rice for dinner for 30 days plus 12. Alrighty. Well, the kids freaked out, you know, a little bit, and I ended up looking a little bit like not the best father, but I have to say that the experience changed us in some pretty cool ways. We, we really did become much more thankful for the blessings God gave our family. We talked long and hard about why some people get so much while others seem to get a whole lot less. And to this day, my kids will eat anything that's put before them, really. They eat everything. Now, I want to be honest. This is not the best way to motivate people, okay? It, it really wasn't, but it's a great story and I want to tell it to you, okay? Because sometimes we need to stare our areas of self-centeredness right in the face in order to truly see them. We can miss everyday opportunities for growth and provisions of grace if we're not looking for them. God can shape our lives in some pretty amazing ways once He gets our attention. And He really did through this. By the way, I still always order beans and rice when I'm out eating tacos and burritos. My kids, not so much. 
the next best time to grow in gratitude and see all good things from God's own hand is today. Leave me your thoughts and ideas and any pushbacks in the comments below. This should be fun. And as always, thanks for watching.